Okay, so this video, we're gonna give you a quick introduction to the ESI wireless programmable room thermostat. So this is with the controller with the cover down. You've got some quick access buttons here. But if you want to adjust the programs and adjust the way you want to control the actual unit itself, you need to lift up the unit. So first of all, just to give you a rundown on the buttons themselves, you've got a home button, a next button, a minus, a plus button, and these are all functions used to set the different parameters. A is accept. C is copy, so if you want to copy a certain schedule across, you use C. And H is holiday mode. Holiday mode is where you can set the programmer to turn down for a set period of time between two dates. It's not really used that often. If you do want to use it, we'd recommend reading through the manual that comes in the box. Just a quick note as well, the batteries are behind this little case here. Battery life on one of these controllers is generally between two and three years, depending on the quality of the battery and how regularly you interact with the thermostat. If you do start to see the screen dying or you start to lose connection with the boiler, it's always worth checking the quality and the power of the batteries and replacing them as required. So to control the different menus on the actual programmer, we use this little slider at the bottom. Before we get to that, let's just go over what's on the screen. So top left here is the current room temperature. So the big numbers here, 24.5 degrees. I'm holding this unit in my hand, so it's gonna be a little bit hotter than normal. Above that, we've got TU, which is for Tuesday, and that will move across seven days as you program the controller. Flashing signal here above the next to the little C sign means it's made a connection with the actual receiver. On the right hand side, that's the current time. The bottom, we've got the current date. And the bottom right is a small number. That's the set point that the controller has been programmed to be at. So in this instance here, we've turned the controller to off on the slider. It's set the thermostat to five degrees, which means it won't come on unless there's frost. It'll manually override. And it has no need to come on because it's set to five degrees and the current room temperature is 24.5. So moving the slider left to right, let's run through the menus. All the way to the left, there's a little black line there that lines up with these dots. This is where you can set the time and date of the programmer itself. So you can use the plus and the minus arrows to select different times. And once you've selected a new parameter, just click A to confirm that selection. Once you've done that and you've set up the right time and temperature, obviously it's important to do this if you're gonna be using schedules. If the time and the date isn't correct in the schedules, then when you set them, it's not gonna work properly. Just make sure you've got the right day set up at the top. Next one along is program. So this is program is where we set the controller for the automatic function. So as we can see here now, we've got Monday to Friday flashing and then Saturday to Sunday because we've got two ways of setting up the programmer. Once we click that, we simply click next and then we're gonna get different set points and different times and temperatures to choose on our programmer. So right now, this is program one it's set to 22.5 degrees and to come on at 6.50 in the morning. If we want that slightly earlier, maybe 6 a.m., we simply click next, set the temperature that we want it to be at 6 a.m. So for example, we want the house to be 21 degrees. Click next and we're on number two. So what we're gonna say now is at 10 o'clock, we want the controller to turn down to a lower set point of say 12 degrees. Now what this means is we don't really want the heating to be on at 10 o'clock. We want that initial boost in the morning and then to go off. Then we can select at five o'clock for example. We want the heating to come on and we want it to come on at 23 degrees. And finally, position four, we would like at 10 o'clock at night on 9.30 at night, we'd like the controller to turn down to 17 degrees. What's important here, this is the last program of the day. This is what the temperature will be maintained in the property until P1 comes round the following day. 
Obviously nighttime, you don't want your heating on too warm, especially while you're asleep. So turn it down to a lower set temperature. Click next, that's done. And you can actually select A and that confirms the Monday to Friday schedule. Next, we can do the same thing for Saturday and Sunday. So we simply run through our programs, adjust as necessary. Once we get to P4, same thing again, just check the final set temperature and click A. So we've now confirmed all our settings on our program, which means if we wanted to, we could click right all the way over to the right. It's now set to automatic, which means that the program we set earlier on is now built into the controller. The boiler will come on and off at the times we set and at the temperatures we set also. Alternatively, if you don't want to stick to a set pattern, then what you could do is use the MAN function. MAN stands for manual or on. Essentially, you move the flider across to MAN. And as we can see right now, because I'm holding the unit in my hand, it's 26 degrees, currently the current temperature it's reading, but it's only set to 12 degrees. Therefore, the controller isn't gonna turn on. If we hold the plus button down to increase the set temperature, beyond the current room temperature, so in this case we'll do 27 degrees, you'll see the flame sign has now been indicated, meaning the boiler needs to turn on to heat the room to 27. Once the boiler reaches 27, it will turn off. Now, if you wanted to, you could slide between manual and off at your preferred set temperature, or you could leave the controller in manual all the time and simply lower and increase the temperature depending whether you want the boiler on or off. That isn't the most cost effective way of running it, but it is an option if you just want a simple solution to turning your boiler on and off. So, and if, you, if you're going away, you want to turn the control off completely, just simply slide it to off. It will preset to that five degree minimum temperature. That is there just in case of frost. So if you leave the property for a couple of weeks during a very cold period, if the temperature in the property drops below five degrees, the thermostat will automatically kick in just to cycle some warm air around the property to stop it from freezing. As we said before, you do get a full manual to work this controller. There's a user guide and there's actually further information on the ESI website. You can also scan this QR code here and that will give you further user instructions. Hopefully that's been a user, quick user guide in helping you set up your controller. If you need any further information, then head over to heatable.co.uk.